this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to complete a color wheel. The color wheel is a tool that artists use that houses the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. The primary colors are yellow, blue, and red, as you can see here. You can see that these are the only colors that I'm going to be using because the primary colors are the foundation. They are the colors that you use to mix every other color. So I'm going to start out with red and I'm going to open the paint and put some on the palette. In this case, the palette is just a simple piece of freezer paper, which is an inexpensive way to find a paint palette. I'm going to pour out, dab out some of the other colors as well, just so that I have them ready. To begin filling in my color wheel, I'm going to start with the primary colors. The primary colors are pure colors. They can't be mixed from any other color. You may be able to find different shades or different um, types of red at, the arts, at an art supply store, but you can't ever mix that red. Next, I'm going to clean my brush out by swirling it in some water. And I have a paper towel. You can use a paper towel to dry the brush after you're done cleaning it out. Next, I'm going to add the yellow to the color wheel. And I'm going to count four spaces over. I'm going to clean out my brush just like I did after using the red. Now I'm going to count four more spaces over and add the blue. It's helpful if you use a smaller paintbrush for this if you'd like because that way you'll have a little bit more control over the paint since you're painting in a small space in between lines. If your paint seems to um, not be moving very fluidly, you can dip your paintbrush in a little bit of water. You don't want to add too much because if you add too much water, it's going to make your paper soggy and your paper is going to dissolve. So that's definitely not a good thing to add a lot of water, but a little bit of water will allow your paint to move fluidly. You can see here how it's making it a little bit more transparent or see-through and it's helping um, to create a neater appearance. I'm going to rinse my brush again. Now we're going to mix the secondary colors. The secondary colors are colors made from mixing two primary colors together. They are green, purple, and orange. So to make orange, you're going to mix equal parts of yellow and red. I'm going to mix using a palette knife just to keep things um, simpler so I don't have to keep cleaning my brush. I'm going to scoop up some red and I'm going to scoop up an equal part or an equal size of yellow. And when they look about even, then you're going to swirl them together. I'm going to keep my paper towel here so that I can simply just wipe off the palette knife. Next, I'm going to apply this orange color on my color wheel between the red and the yellow. And I'm going to apply it here in the center because these two are going to be a tertiary color, which I will explain later. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes if you need to turn your paper, that's okay. Next, I'm going to make green by mixing yellow and blue. I'm going to take the palette knife and do the same thing that I did for the red and the yellow. I'm going to take equal parts of the yellow and the blue. Just going to grab a little more yellow because it looks like I didn't grab enough in the first place. And again, I'm going to skip over one and paint in the center because again, these are for the tertiary colors. Now I'm going to mix purple. To mix purple, you mix equal parts of red and blue. Again, I'm going to skip over one space and I'm going to paint right in the middle. If you make a mistake, that's okay because you're going to be painting over it. Try to be as neat as possible, but if you make a mistake, don't worry. Next, we're going to make the tertiary colors, which are made from mixing neighboring primary and secondary colors. So you can see this one, for example, will be made for mixing purple and red. So it will be red-purple. This one will be made from mixing blue and purple. This one will be blue-purple. This one will be made from mixing green and blue. So it'll be blue-green, etc. So we're going to go around the entire color wheel by mixing these tertiary colors. So you'll want to have the colors that you previously mixed as your secondary colors as well as your primary colors ready to mix the tertiary colors. This red-orange, for example, will be made for mixing red. And you want to make sure, see in this um, pile of paint, we have a little bit of the blue or the purple left over. That's, that's not a good thing. You want to have the pure paint. So if your paint is contaminated like this is, you'll want to dab out some more. And it's still a little bit contaminated, so you want to make sure your palette knife is completely clean. You're going to scoop up your secondary color and your primary color and you want to have about equal parts. So this will be a red orange. It should be a little bit darker than your orange, a little bit more towards red. So if you're noticing that it's not, you're going to need to add a little bit more red. Next, we're going to make yellow orange. So you're going to mix the leftover orange that you had from before not the orange that we just made, but the original orange. And you're going to combine it with equal parts yellow. And again, you're going to want to make sure your paint isn't contaminated, so if it is, you can grab a little bit more yellow.
Next, we're going to mix yellow green. So you're going to combine equal parts yellow and equal part green. You can take the green that you mixed earlier and mix it with the equal parts yellow. You can see that I'm not using all of it because I'm going to need to use some of this green again later to make blue green. So it's important to save your secondary colors, at least some of them. That way you don't have to remix them. It's important to keep a few paper towels nearby. That way if your original paper towel gets too contaminated with paint, you have a fresh one. Next we're going to mix blue-green. So you're going to mix equal parts of the blue with equal parts of the green that you already mixed. Not the yellow-green, the regular green. Next we're going to mix blue-purple. So you're going to mix equal parts of blue with equal parts purple. Last, we're going to mix red purple or red violet. We're going to mix equal parts of red and violet. Next, we're going to mix two complementary colors together to create something called a complementary neutral. A complementary neutral is kind of like a dulled down color. It's, it's kind of like a brown color. And you mix that by mixing two complementary colors together. Complementary colors are opposite each other on the color wheel or diagonal from each other, like um, purple and yellow green and red, blue and orange. So it's a primary color and the opposite secondary color. First, we're going to mix red and green. You want to mix equal parts of red and green together. Sometimes the complementary neutrals are used instead of black because they're more subtle and black can sometimes be a little bit too harsh to use in a painting. Next we're going to mix yellow and purple or also called violet. Last, we're going to mix blue and orange together. After filling these boxes out, you have your middle grays, which are considered a neutral. A color wheel can help you see the relationship between colors and prepare to do a final finished painting of your own. Now try your hand at it. Remember, complementary colors are found across from one another on the color wheel. Blue, yellow, and red are primary colors and cannot be mixed, and neutrals can be created by mixing even amounts of complementary colors. Mm -hmm.